have been joined by lawyer Godwin Edujitamako to my immediate left. He's a member of the NDC's legal team and also member of the uh, communications team. And George AC is uh, communications director of NADMO and member of the NPP's communications team. So lots of issues making news in the papers. We have the Daily Graphic, Ghanaian Times, just by way of looking at the headlines. And the Daily Graphic talks about new chief justice takes office and uphold tolerance, national unity, and CC edges Ghanaians on Constitution Day, and we support new voters register, two parties and former presidential candidates. The Ghanaian Times for today says, be fair, uphold the rule of law, president charges new chief justice, and U.S.-Iran tensions, world leaders must call for calm, that's according to Vladimir Entridanso, and ambulances to be commissioned on January 28, that's according to the health minister. And the Daily Guide for this morning, also with a story about the new chief justice says, Enin Yabua is new CJ, and Giba fights communication ministry, NDC sued over primaries. Okay, so uh, Dr. Michael is here, he'll be telling us more about that. The finder for this morning says, Giba raises red flags, accuses communications ministry of sneaking encryption into free-to-air broadcast infrastructure, and protect the integrity of the judiciary, President charges new CJ. Auditor General must compel over 40,000 public officers to declare assets, that's according to Occupy Ghana. And GCB Bank invests 370 million in agriculture and cocoa sectors. The Business and Financial Times for today says, Oforiata's biggest test, we'll look at what that is, and economic expectations for year 2020. And God finally injects 127 million in ADB. And final paper for today is the new statement, the Daily Statesman, actually, that says, Guard the independence of our judges. President urges new Chief Justice. And Akufuado praises Ghanaians for making year of return success. And um, Zongo Ministries brings new lavatories to our crowd. Gentlemen, good morning, and uh, thank you very much for joining us. Good morning. Winston, good morning. Uh, and I hope you've had a very good new year, uh, 2020. Uh, by the... Grace of the Almighty God, uh, 2019, um, we just thank God for how far he's brought us. Uh, 2020 promises to be an election year, so it's important that um, we thank our viewers who have kept fit with this platform to date. Our expectation is that we'll go into the 2020 election in a very peaceful atmosphere. Our difficulty, our difficulty with the flag bearer the other day indicated that it was around 31st of January 2019 when we had the Ayaso by election mm -hmm. where armed officers of the state shot into innocent Ghanaians. The president forms a commission of inquiry and the work of the Commission of Inquiry was to advise and recommend to our president the ways and means to deal with matters like that that will come out in future. The commission presented this report and made far-reaching recommendations, including but not limited to changing the security architecture of the country, one that assures citizens that tomorrow, when there is an election and we all go, we can cast our ballot in the very atmosphere of peace and tranquility. Regrettably, regrettably, especially now that we are celebrating Constitution Day, our president had refused or neglected to actually implement the recommendation from those eminent Ghanaians. You know, there's someone that had been a recommendation that he should be prosecuted. As we speak, there had not been any indication whatsoever. In fact, government's position was basically to rubbish. Are you talking work. about double? Yes. Yeah, but the, I mean, but the white paper said he was provoked, and so that's no. It. The white paper, I, I, and, and you see, if you look at assault mm. in the law of you know uh, uh, assault, the law on assault, provocation had never been a defense. In fact, provocation is only a defense when there is death. Okay, we'll get back to you because it's just by way of mm. your preliminary comment. Let me get to George. Uh, Happy New Year to you. And I hope the year has been good for you so far. Uh, by grace, uh, by the grace of the Almighty, uh, we are doing well. We thank God for uh, shepherding us into 2020 uh, safely. 
Uh, we believe, as the Honorable uh, Leonard Lawyer said, it's the year of election. And so uh, we are doing all we can to ensure that the processes are smooth. And then uh, the people's will is what will be uh, determined this year. And everybody will be happy for the ultimate winner. I like it when politicians talk yes. about the fact that, you know, <laughs> it's election year and once yeah. 2020 starts, and everything they say starts from election. But before well, I, I yes. mean, the, the lawyer, Leonard Lawyer, said uh, something about the uh, Iowa West War gone something. Well, I want the NS to know, to be assured that, you know, that is not going to be replicated in the 2020 election. You know why? Tell me. Uh, when it comes to by elections, you know, cons he knows constituencies before by election run affairs in the constituency. But once there's a by election, the national executive take over the constituency. Mm. You get that? Sure. And once my general secretary is moving to a constituency, you know the force that he goes with. Once his general secretary moves, you know the force. And when these two forces meet, you know what happens. So, in, in, in you effect, you're it. admitting that. Yeah. Uh, you as political parties create tensions in by-elections. Sometimes, which, yes. Which yes. do not happen in yes. general elections. Because in general elections, the national officers are supervising the whole nation. Their hands are full. You get it. And so, you know, they are deployed to oversee what goes on in the regions and then some districts. Okay? But once there's a by-election, the whole force moves there. And two... It's not the fact that uh, the president is not going to recommend, uh, sorry, implement the recommendations. Because, look, have we had any general election involving the political parties thereafter? Well, is the, there I a mean, by-election? Well, 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 the government rejected some been, of the recommendations. Of course, of course, so, for the recommendations. Uh, there's so a precedence that he does that. reject recommendations, there's a precedence. it means you're not going to implement No, 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 no. He, we rejected no, some. rejected recommendations. Rejected so recommend some, not that, all. Yes. No. So the recommendations that are rejected are not going to be implemented. Yes. And some accepted. Sure. Okay, and so what happens to those ones, right? Anyway, they will definitely the, be implemented. The, so the, so the, uh, uh, let I mean, my this, brother be assured this, that uh, there's a case precedence for that. You see, that. You he knows that. Yes, in all, in all the violations that we've had, mm -hmm. yes, there's been the tension. greater issue is that there had always been one form of tension yeah. or the yeah. other. But never in the political history of this country have we seen national security operatives being the one undertaking that mass shooting. Regrettably, the, the, the justification provided, and you interviewed some of them, whereas the, uh, the, the director of operations of the National Security Council Secretariat, Colonel Michael Opoku, was saying that they pick actionable intelligence. Yes. Another person comes to say, no. Azugu comes and says, no. It was on that day when they got there, they saw motorbikes and therefore they followed. So the very confused nature of the justification provided by government is why we are here. And like the flag bearer indicated, if what happened at Ayawaso West Wagon is replicated, then the very peace of this country is what to be called. Well, but it's true that that is not going to happen no, 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 because, no. You, uh, see, you know, by no, listen, peculiar you see, you see, I would have taken the words of His Excellency the President for whatever it is, if, on the basis of the recommendation of the commission, he had proceeded to act. But this is our president. First of all, even releasing the report of the commission, it took him more than six months. That's on that. Uh, no, it took no, him no, within six months. months. Oh, please, that's the please, law. Please, that's please, the position please, of the law. Very well. <laughs> within six months. Yeah. But it was actually at the toe end. You know. Yes, yes, but the law says but, within but, six but, months. But you yes. see, even more importantly, <laughs> is the question that, even when the commission finally brought out its recommendation, if you read the white paper, government basically said either the commission members were incompetent okay. and never really knew the attempts How of How do you reference. come to that conclusion? No, but if you read, yeah, yeah. government said the commission itself was not able to identify it properly. Government terms. says some of the things are some not of part the of the things. terms of reference. Yes. No, so, yes. so, let's move on. No, let's if you bring yes. three yes. eminent yes. Ghanaians, yes. three eminent Ghanaians. But you have terms of reference. No, if, if you bring, your no, so, you are, so if you are basically saying I'm incompetent. <laughs> no. uh, well, those are your words. Let's no, but that's on. exactly what no, it is. That's why the flag bearer is saying that as we speak, the one who is in charge of the security architecture is His Excellency the President. Okay. The peace of this country is, us, is his responsibility. Yes. Ours, we are stakeholders. Yeah. We are going to help him. But 
if what he did in Ayawaso to repeat itself, then Mr. President, you will be going down as the president who let this country down. Let's move on to other issues. He's never going to do that. Uh, because He's done that already. Do that. Well, let's, uh, let's move on. And the Daily Graphic talks about the swearing in of uh, a new chief justice. And for many of us watchers in the Fourth Republic, would recognize that this is actually, you know, uh, the first time that you've seen, you know, one chief justice hand over to another and handing over to another. So uh, Justice Kwesi in India Boa is a new chief justice. He's talked about how he's going to guard the independence of the judiciary. Uh, he went through vetting. Uh, both sides, you know, approved him. But what is that one thing that you would want him to do, uh, starting off with Yedu Jitamaklo? Uh, there are a lot of issues within, uh, particularly legal education, but I don't know. What is it that you would want to see Justice Enin Yeboa do that you would want him remembered for? No. Uh, so once again, uh, for me, I mean, being an officer of mm. the court, I definitely have, um, um, I do have a lot of expectation. Mm. Um, first of all, even reforming how court procedures and others are done. And I've always made the point that until 2004, when we changed the rules of courts, that's uh, the LN 140A, and then we came out with CI 49. There had been uh, 47. There had been some kinds of amendments over the period. Um, I think that we require a more holistic amendment of the rules. The very people that we borrow these rules from, the Brits, they have moved forward. Um, and so I strongly believe that with this leadership, the, the rules of court committee would have to evaluate. Sometimes the time taken for interlocutory matters, interlocutory appeals, and all of those matters to be dealt with. Sometimes it gets so long. Uh, I've had the experience of talking to friends from Nigeria who had practiced in Nigeria, and they tell you that some of these matters, they have moved forward. They are more expeditious. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure, um, um, and he is also a guru when it comes to civil procedure. So I'll defer that to his superior wisdom. The most important thing for me relates to legal education and the Legal Profession Act. What about it? The Legal Profession Act is almost more than 50 years. Mm -hmm. And so we are talking about an act that regulates a profession and the act itself is more than 50 years old. I do not want to believe that the expectation of who a lawyer is, what is required of a lawyer, as at the 1950s or 60s, is the same as we have today. Societies have evolved. The profession itself has evolved. And so I strongly believe that the Legal Profession Act, as it stands, itself needs a certain level of amendment so as it will be in tune with current, you know, trends. Mm. And I want to believe that under the leadership of CJ in um, a deeper conversation would, uh, will have a deeper conversation around. Some of those issues came up during the vetting. Yeah. For instance, you have a situation where at the General Legal Council, judges are basically at the General Legal Council. And so the judge is the one, and this is supposed to be the body that regulates lawyers and not judges. Mm -hmm. And so if you have a situation where the body that regulates lawyers is made up of judges, and you have a problem with that body, and you go back to the judge, what happens? So you have a curious situation where my own brother, Sosu, had this challenge. What was the most appropriate thing? No, so I'm coming. So you have a situation where Sosu had this problem. He eventually went to court to challenge the decision of the disciplinary committee of the General Legal Council. The judge, a high court judge sitting, gives a verdict. The next time, you have a member of the General Legal Council take the judge to cleanness. Me and, and which member was this? I mean, I mean, it's notorious. <laughs> you understand? And so you have, a, and that's a senior lawyer. So he's taking the judge to cleanness. The message he's sending to me as a young lawyer is that when I disagree with the judge, I should take him on. So what's the... Meanwhile, what my, pro so my proposal mm -hmm. is that we should have a situation where the body that regulates maybe lawyers will be a bit more different from the architecture that we have now. Okay. So that I cannot just go 
and attack a judge. But you have some lawyers on there. I mean, Sambo Kujet is a lawyer. He's not a judge. But let's move on. Let me get to... Uh, <laughs> you know his claim. His claim was that mm -hmm. the composition of the General Legal Council is made up of judges, Supreme Court judges. So how come that a High Court judge is reversing the decision? Meanwhile, when they sit mm. at the committee, they do not sit as Supreme Court judges. Great. So, you've so to avoid all those situations, yeah. why? Yeah. I mean, let me get to uh, you, George, now. I mean, uh, yeah. mm. finally, and the president said he chose, uh, you know, 7th January, which is, which is Constitution Day, yeah. because he wants him to uphold the Constitution that's and ensure that uh, he does everything to protect and sustain our Constitution. Uh, that's good. That's one of his uh, main duties uh, as the Chief Justice of the land. Uh, and so, yes, uh, the day was right, and then the individual, uh, we all have now accepted that uh, he's the right man for the uh, position. Uh, understand he's the 14th Chief yeah. Justice of the land. And uh, unlike a lawyer, I'm not an officer of the courts. Uh, so as a layman, I'm in this crew, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, you know, uh, we're happy. We have a lot of expectations, as, as you said. One topmost among them is the reforms, the legal reforms, and then particularly uh, legal education. You know, we've had situations where uh, the immediate past chief justice said it's not everybody that is to get legal education. It became a problem. Uh, people have touted Justice Anin Yabua as a pro-reformist, and so we're expecting that... Uh, issues you know relating to legal education will be properly addressed but to to be fair to him he began speaking about it at the vetting he said certain bases that have informed the kind of things we are seeing and he was prepared to put some of the uh, <laughs> answer sheets in public domain and and you know that was daring you get you get it so people within the legal fraternity uh, must engage him to see the way to go and he even spoke about the curricula right yeah, yeah. and so these are challenges that he has to immediately uh, tackle in, in, in conformity or in consonance with the General Legal Council. So they uh, deal with that. The second thing I want to talk uh, about, which I believe the uh, majority of the people of this country will look up to, is matters of corruption in the bench or in the judiciary. Uh, not only the bench, judi the judiciary, right? The, the, the yes. law, law fraternity, because we had cases where is there some are induced it's by... It's safer to say corruption in the judiciary. In, thank you very much. Uh, than yes. to say the bench is corrupt. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, the whole service, the, yes. the corruption in there. But when you say the bench, you are limiting it yes, to yes. You know, the judges, I, I, and that's I problematic. Uh -huh. I rephrase. Uh, so matters of corruption, you know, he must have a handle on it. Uh, because it's not the best when the current uh, CDD Afro barometer still puts the bench, uh, sorry, or the judiciary as the second uh, most uh, corrupt. And so we need to do something to erase that perception and then make people believe that uh, the justice is being served, okay, is a, it should be seen to be served, okay, and is actually being served. Uh, as an ordinary person, I believe when I have a case and I go to court, I'll get a fair hearing, and then I'll get uh, uh, the verdict to be fair. Whether I win or I lose, I know the process was fair, right? That is the essence of the uh, getting matters to court to be adjudicated upon. And the last one I want uh, uh, my brother is, I don't know about it, maybe controversial, but uh, Edwidge uh, may educate me a lot. This issue about the April, the April of the uh, lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get change. to a point where we can have... Can't we change we can, that? Can't we? You can know, we change our that? indigenous you know, you know, thing. Know, is not going to change that. Yeah. You, know, you know, interestingly <laughs> enough, on the Brexit yeah. decision, yeah. when um, um, the Prime Minister uh, prologued, yeah. you know, Parliament, and the matter went to the UK Supreme Court. You know Lady Hill, who basically read the judgment of the Supreme Court. She just came, simple attack, yes. you know, mm -hmm. and then she started reading. The other, you know, judges who joined, when they are sued, you yeah. know, and it was so simple. And so there had been conversation. It happen, yeah. No, there had been conversation <laughs> that, look, you know what, yeah. you borrow this thing yes. from them. They yes. brought this thing to you. They had moved on. Exactly. And so we need to move on. Yeah. But, I mean, I, well, mean, I, I would defer wow. some of these things to the superior. But yeah. just a little yeah. on the 
legal education, yes. very key. And I've always maintained that if I've had the opportunity of going through legal education and becoming a lawyer today, I strongly believe that that opportunity should be given to everyone yeah. once the person has demonstrated that competence yeah. to do that. And so I strongly believe that we can have a conversation around quality yeah. and still have mass production. Yeah. Okay. And so it cannot be the but case. But you know it's a deliberate policy. That's why I'm saying that. Three or four of the top most uh, professions. Uh -huh. So, so mm -hmm. law, medicine, engineering, architecture. We'll you're saying you don't just deliberate. You don't just not to, they, they create a lot of them, but yes, even though yes. we use them, no, they regulate the no, but, but that, you, you, you got that from where? No. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why. That's why I believe that. Uh -huh. I believe <laughs> that his lordship, the CJ, together with legal reformers, we should have an honest conversation. Yeah. And I recall following the flag bearer to meet the Ghana Bar Association. Mm -hmm. And we had a very honest conversation with them that we can still have increased number of students undertaking legal education and still maintain the quality. Okay. Let's so move on. Let's time move on. we have another law school. Well, let's move on to other issues Maybe. now. And, uh, you know, yesterday was Constitution Day. I mean, the president swore in Justin Yebo on Constitution Day. He's talked about the significance of it. Uh, you have the National Commission on Specific Education also talking about upholding tolerance and national unity on mm -hmm. Constitution Day. It's now a holiday, and there's been lots of issues about it. I mean, we're told that's a way of helping all of us to actually appreciate that, you know, um, well, our Constitution has come far, 27 years since its implementation, and so we need to protect it. Do we necessarily need a holiday, one, and starting off with you, George, to, you know, uh, get all of us remember that we have a constitution we must protect, and even our constitution in its current form, is it the best constitution we can have? Yeah, thank you. Uh, one, I agree uh, it should be a holiday, uh, more especially because it didn't come to add on to the holidays, but it came to replace a you holiday. You had to replace 1st July. That's very yes. significant, yes, isn't very, it? Yes, very, very. We're replacing the day we became a republic. Yeah, with a and which republic has been overthrown again and again and again. Yeah, but it doesn't take away the fact that uh, yes. Ghana had a president yeah, it's, it's on the 1st good. of July uh, 1960. Yes. It, it's good, but we can still have that conversation whether to bring back, to be honest, because I thought 1st uh, July is very significant, mm -hmm. and so uh, we should have retained it. That was okay. my personal sure. uh, position. But, uh, you know, it's a day for the elderly, you know, that's how we had converted it into. Now, fortunately, we've had this constitution over 27 years. The first two, I understand, were around two, 27 months. Now it's 27 years. Mm -hmm. uh, it's worth celebrating. And so if you even institute the day as a holiday, it becomes a bit significant because the young guy will say, why, what's the, today's holiday for what? And say it's a constitutional day. Okay, then you begin to uh, probe. What is it about the constitution? And, and why the significance of celebrating it and then having a holiday? Then we begin to have constitutional education to uh, the young people. And NCCE, uh, when we're growing up, uh, we had civic education, okay? <laughs> so, but now, I don't know, it's been incorporated in social studies and all that. Uh, but if we can have the NCCE you intensified... Have a program, you have a, a subject, a citizenship studies. Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, the basic school. Yes, many yes. of these things yes. are incorporated. Good, there. that's good. So uh, it's, it's very important for us to see that the Constitution is very important for all of us. Okay, it is uh, the basic document that regulates uh, the way we do things and, and our national sovereignty and many others. Okay, our rights, liberties, and all that you, you we have is uh, contained in the Constitution, that document. Uh, some places have on written constitution. We have uh, a written constitution, so we need to protect it. Now, coming to the matter of some of the challenges in the constitution, uh, we can still address them, right? Uh, as we go on, people have uh, uh, challenges with some of the constitutional provisions that uh, are there. People feel we should over the years, it's time we uh, reform. Unfortunately, uh, under uh, Edu G and Co., we have the Constitutional Review Committee, 
uh, commission, which did a lot of work. Uh, fortunately, unfortunately, they also issued a white paper accepting and rejecting uh, some of the recommendations. But as to whether the ones that were accepted are being implemented is another matter uh, that we can engage in. So it should be a continuous matter. The, the, the protection of this constitution is very important, and the Fourth Republic, you know, is very important. We don't want any coup d'etat. There's opportunity for us, as you've given us today, to vent our, you know, grievances. Well, George, isn't it obvious that yeah. Ghanaians have accepted that, you know, the best way to change a government yes. is through the thumb? I mean, yes. all over, if you hear the conversations, people are talking about 2020 and how yeah. There should either be a change or a continuation. But you know, some people are in court today for, you know, attempting yeah, to but subvert. But they don't have the support of Ghanaians. Yes, 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 yes. Which means that there yes. are people still who have the mindset that you should overthrow. That's if we perceive uh, that they are guilty. They, I mean, they <laughs> no, no, I say they are in court. Yeah, I'm not, court I'm not so it, it, it could still be that they are not guilty. Uh, uh, yes, and, could and that be. would mean that and, they, and, and they from, didn't do all of that. From the conversations and the things we are hearing, uh, it's not too palatable. You get it. Even for people to conceive. Because I know every four years I'll get the opportunity to either retain or reject a, a government in power. You get it. So I should be excited about that. The four year comes. If I have disagreements with the government, I do what what I ought to do. Okay. If I think they are on course and doing very well, I go to endorse them so they continue with a good work. Great. That's that opportunity. Let me get to the delegate. Uh, I mean, good. shouldn't we be focusing our conversation, mm -hmm. I mean, on the need to review the Constitution 1 and the need to go back to the work that was done by the Constitutional Review Commission. A white paper was released. It's taking forever to have many of the, uh, you know, uh, recommendations and those that were accepted, implemented. Yes, uh, I work more or less every day with this constitution. Sure. And so I think that if you want to do a comparison, our constitution with that of the United States, they have maintained it, yes, for yeah. over 200 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We are still doing 27. So we have a long way to go. But you note that even though they have over 200 years, they have not gone through a process where you want to amend the constitution per se. What they have done is to use the judicial process to do more or less some of this amendment and interpretation of the constitution to keep it in line with, you know, uh, uh, what shall I say, modern trends. And so the you... Pleading the fifth is amendment, is it not? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So they call it, and those faith and what have you, all these are matters that the courts yeah. have been intervened. And even where there have been amendments, it has been very, very limited. Yeah. And most of the amendments they have done, they are ones that deal more directly with human rights, okay. matters okay. that enhances the rights of people. Our constitution as we have it, and like we always taught in law school, that the constitution itself is an organic yeah. being. And so it is a document that embodies our aspiration as a people, where we want to be tomorrow, tomorrow on this. That constitution mirrors that particular engagement. And that is why today we can be here, Georgia, because it's part of the national conversation. And I've always maintained that part of our history is the fact that at a time in the history of this country, before you can demonstrate, you needed the permission of the IGP. <laughs> there was an intervention judicial and the court, through their intervention, they had given another lever where today we can use so that I can go demonstrate. All I need to do is to inform the police. And several other reforms that the court through the intervention of the court. And so once you are dealing with the Constitution, there's also the question of the judicial engagement that has brought all of us where we are today, which is key. Now, there had been also executive enrolled yeah. in trying to get reform, legislation, laws passed together with Parliament to ensure that we have an arrangement that occurs with modern trends. And that is one of the things that inform May his soul rest in peace, Professor John Evans Satamils, his decision to come with the Constitution Review Commission and its recommendation. And I recall very well President John Dramani Mahama putting up a, an implementation committee, I think headed by Professor Evie Odankwa, to work on the strategies. And in fact, it included the late uh, uh, 
uh, appear minka the okay. yes the yeah, business yes, yes, the exactly and <coughs> so the whole idea was to have a bipartisan you know uh, 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 implementation committee that will work on it this current administration my understanding is that they have picked or selected certain you know provisions or recommendations by the committee to implement we had expended so much on the Constitution Review Commission. And so I strongly believe that we need a more holistic view. If it requires that we go on referendum, we can have several questions for the referendum so that at the end of the day, we can have that done at the less expense. Mm. Referendum, there'll be no u -turn. Not the manner <laughs> in which. <laughs> no, I am, I am, I am, I am concerned <laughs> about the manner in which it came the other time. Okay, so you see, when you build, uh, you see, one of the great virtues of great leaders uh, is the question of building consensus. That's it. And so that once you are able to build significant consensus yeah. around a subject matter, you can have a referendum discuss issues and not in a form where no, no, we no. wanted to you, amend you, Article 55. You've reached, you've reached your uh, commitment. So, so uh, you've reached your you know, that, that one is a subject <laughs> for another discussion. Yeah. I, I didn't want to say the yes, president yes, failed in building consensus. No, no, I didn't want to say that. We did. He, I didn't did. he engaged that. almost everyone. Well, I mean, that's for you. <laughs> he decided to do you to do it. But, but Winston, it's yes. key. I mean, he, yeah. made, yeah. Yeah. Yes, he made a point about um, the Republic Day. 1st July. Mm -hmm. I still do not understand why His Excellency the President um, tinkered with that particular holiday. It's very significant. I strongly believe that the, the Republic Day, Safe Independence Day, another significant milestone in our journey forward, uh, I mean, relates more importantly to the Republic Day. The argument is that, you know, the, yes, there's a, there was a 1st July was a Republic Day, and it's a Republic Day. But uh, the Republican Day Constitution, the, I mean, the 1960 Constitution was overthrown. And we're currently in the Fourth Republic. No, what, what we didn't no. overthrow mm -hmm. is the day. The, you hold on, you hold on. You, you'd understand. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you, might have, you, you remember the lecture by Professor Aaron Michael Cray. In that particular lecture, he talks about the fact, and I am thinking that could probably be the influence on all of this. He talks about the fact that in 1960, yes, we became a republic. After that, it was overthrown. We had a second republic, we had a third republic, and now we have a, we have a fourth republic, which has been the longest. So why don't we celebrate the fourth republic as a holiday? And so the day on which we have President Swan, the day on which the constitution came into effect, be celebrated as a constitution day rather than consistently going with the first July. But and the constitution did not come into effect on the seventh. Of it January. did. It did. It did. No, look, look, look at the architecture where. But I did. I don't even want us to focus the conversation. The Republic Day is a milestone. Yeah, mm, agreed. Our engagement with the Brits. That was the day. We save it. We, it's like sure. the umbilical cord. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So it's a uh, very significant thing okay. in our forward march. As a free democratic, but I think we people. still celebrate it. Then we commemorate, commemorate it. Commemorate. But I'm Thank saying you. that making it a republic, I mean, like a public holiday, holiday. in the for, form, for you work. in the form mm -hmm. that it was. So, okay, so I mean, it's on. one of the things that will have an engagement, a conversation with the people of this country once we get the benefit of power. When once you get a benefit of power, you would want to change not, it again and make it a Yes, I mean, it's a not, very significant not, not matter. Not in the near distance future. And anyway, talking about not in the near future and the benefit <laughs> of power and everything, of course, elections are just, uh, you know, some 11 months away. And yeah. so all of us would know who gets to become yeah. uh, the ruling government. But talking about elections, and one issue that is kept coming has to do with a bit about, you know, the new voters register. Now, the Electoral Commission has indicated it wants to have a new voters register. Uh, the NDC and some parties are not in favor of it. Uh, uh, just on Monday, they had a press briefing talking about why they do not support it. You also do know that uh, the Chamber of Local Governance has set up uh, that they are going to go to court. Uh, you know, if the Electoral, I mean, uh, because they think that if the Electoral Commission used the old register in conducting district-level elections, they might as well use it in conducting the national elections. Okay. On page 13 of the Daily Graphic, it talks about, uh, you know, two parties and a former presidential candidate. That's uh, uh, Jacob Oseya, boy, independent presidential candidate, talking about they supporting the new voters register. I don't know whether you've read the statement by Jacob Oseya, a very lengthy one, 
that talks about the fact that the current you know biometric verification register and its device and everything is software is controlled by uh, STL and he thinks that the electoral commission should be giving the chance to compile a new one and they would have it you know meet WSQ uh, you know that's the standard worldwide and the EC now would control it and so he's in support of it and he expects other political parties to support same uh, the PP says the electoral commission should be allowed you know to do uh, it uh, to have the appropriate tools in order to achieve this um, what is wrong with having a new voters register? The Electoral Commission says we have a challenge. Jacob Oseya was uh, waded in and he's talked about how the current system doesn't support and the fact that even if you go to a particular you know, uh, polling station, you don't have your name in there, uh, the current one can't even direct you to where you might have your name. He says a new one based on the current technology that they want to employ would certainly be able to do that, and thus should be supported. I, I have heard and read mm. his uh, response, and consistent with my personal belief, every Ghanaian should have the opportunity to express his opinion on national matters. And so he has expressed his opinion. But it's important that we situate this conversation well. We are talking about the voters register that was compiled in 20, uh, 2012. Yeah. Election year. Election year. Now, what is key, if you look at that register, is that we have used that register for the 2012 election. We proceeded use it for the 2015 assembly election, 2016 presidential parliamentary election, the current president, the executive authority vested in him is the product of the current voters register. The 275 MPs, they are products of this current register. None of them had challenged his own election and they are all benefiting from it. Our president had never called into question the credibility of the register that elected him post his victory, post his victory. Whilst he was opposition leader, he had cause to believe that it was blotted. He advanced certain reasons through his running mate, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. In fact, Dr. Baumia claiming that he had used a facial recognition facility indicated that even in voter region, they uncovered 75,000 names. 76,000. 76. Oh, I've even reduced the number. <laughs> now, he was even challenged by the Electoral Commission then produce the 76,000 names yeah. so we can delete. To date, he has not. If you do not know, he has not. Even, but you see, the reason why he cannot do that is that we had always taken the view that even at that time when he was making those claims, they were problematic. They were problematic. Today, as we speak, we have used this same voters register. Just a minute. This same uh, electoral commission, Jane Mensah administration, mm. They've used this same register to conduct, <coughs> for the first time under the 1992 Constitution, the creation of six new regions. Never happened before. She never questioned the credibility of the register. And in fact, thereafter, the president applauded her for doing an excellent job with a referendum. Two, she used this same register in conducting the IRSO by election. She had never questioned its credibility. As late as 17th of December so, 2019. Because of our time, let me no, just no, ask this no, question. No, yes. let, me, let me just ask this question. What is your fear Thank you. about a new voter's register? Thank you. It's not our fear. <laughs> we, in fact, we have no fear. You don't have any fear. We have no, so we no, have a new no, 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 no. Our conversation <laughs> is this. If you look at all the competing matters that we have now, the, 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 the claims advanced by the Electoral Commission as the basis to invalidate this current register does not make sense. Wow. And I make this point because, you see, this is an Electoral Commission that is telling you that their items, <laughs> equipment, software have become obsolete. Thank you. Right? That's their yes. claim. Yeah. But you and I do know that even with your phone, if you have a problem with the software, you don't discard the entire phone. 
you can upgrade the software. And so the Electoral Commission is telling us that the cost, in fact, they do not deny the question that it can be upgraded. All they say is that the cost of the upgrade is more than compiling a new race. Thank you. In order to you doubt that. Yes, in order to have an honest national conversation, it's for you and I, for the Electoral Commission to tell us that this, in fact, is the cost of an upgrade. This, in fact, is the cost of compiling... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, George. <laughs> so this is the cost of a new. Then you and I will now interrogate the figures. And say, like, if it's going my, to cost... My, my indication is that they, they say getting new ones, I think it's about $10, uh, $10 million or so, and it will cost them about $15 million to, you know, um, repair the ones they have. No, that's, you see... The Madame Jane Mensah had actually appeared before the Special Budget Committee mm -hmm. of Parliament, and that committee is chaired by Chairman Sabonso, its ranking member being the Honorable Haruna Idriso. And <coughs> before the Special Budget Committee, she had to go and justify the figures. She has still not produced the cost of an upgrade and the cost, yes, as after, you are after, to. after that meeting, there was a press conference. No, where, even mm -hmm. that press conference, that Bosman and Samotete the other chairperson yes. in charge of technical services. Operation. They want the yes, operation. They want the address. They never produce the cost of an upgrade compared to the cost of compiling a new register. And Winston, between all of us gathered here, as we speak this morning, teachers are on strike. You agree? Yes. As we speak uh, this morning, teachers yes. strike. Yes. As we speak this morning, nursing trainees that were supposed to be paying allowances. They are complaining that the allowances have deferred, no, no, delayed. My understanding is that they have delayed because the basket of resources available are not much. Winston, of all the priorities of the state, if we are going to spend 800 million Ghana cities. What from that figure? No, that's the figure she, by a parliament. That's the figure she herself appeared. No, In the fact, 800 million Ghana cities. As for the conduct of the election. No, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, hold on, hold on. The 443 no, please, million please, so that, no, for the new voters. No, 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 no. I, I, I have seen no, the document. No, no, no. You check. Look, you check the appropriation. In fact, no, no, you check. Hold on, hold on. In fact, she actually, for the 2019, mm -hmm. she presented a budget of almost 1.2 billion. Thank yes, you. for 2020. For 2020, for, 2016. for her every activity. Exactly. For everything. Then I'm telling you that mm -hmm. for the, the register, everything. A new hardware, election. software, everything. A new election mm -hmm. management toolkit. Mm -hmm. It's more comprehensive. Everything, almost eight hundred million. Good. It is not for, about the for, conduct for, for of the, the election. No, please no, let for, us know. No, 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 no. I, 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 I have seen that. Hold on, please, please. please. No, just, please. just, just a little clarification. Yes. I have seen for that. For the new register. For the new voters register, mm -hmm. it is four hundred and forty-three yeah. million. Reviewed downwards now. For the conduct reviewed downwards. For the for the for the con please, for please, the conduct for the true. conduct <laughs> for the con I mean what was approved by Parliament that yes, I saw yes. is what I'm telling yes. you. Mm. Four hundred and forty three million. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can go into the appropriation yes. act and check. Thank you. In fact, for you, the conduct if, if of you are election, even relying on the appropriation for, for the conduct of the election is eight hundred million. Because there's nothing in it. On the EC. There's, there's what no, is. because with the EC one, mm -hmm. that's why it had to go through the special budget. Yes, so committee. they make provisions yeah. for the electoral. That's budget. why I had to go and, through and the I'm special you that, budget. Committee. I'm telling you that when the special budget yeah. committee presented it, I mean Thank during you. the discussion on you know the EC's uh, uh, budget estimates, yeah. this is what came out of it. Mm -hmm. And in that budget estimate, you would see the um, allocations to the EC in 2019 and disbursements to it, which was even short of what they had asked for. Yeah. I took particular interest in that because, I, I mean, there's been that argument. Initially, we're told it was 700 million yeah. for the new voters register. Mm -hmm. But when I checked, and I cross-checked, and I cross-checked again. Thank you, Weston. It is not 800 it's million not. for the new voters register. It's not. It is 443 no, million. No, no, I think, I think no. No, you can actually cross-check. No, no, no. I mean, this, and, 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 no, no. I mean, we can come back. We can come back and talk about this. But, but, you see, but let me get to George okay, on this. Come okay. on. I mean, let me get, get to George on this. So, George, yeah. uh, your take on all of this. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we, we, let me, see. he's an officer of the court. Sometimes uh, it, it worries me. You know, in 2015, correct me if I'm wrong, there was a Supreme Court ruling which says the National Health Insurance Card cannot be used as a citizenship identification. Yes. Which same had earlier been used 
as a citizenship identification for the registration uh, of the, uh, of the but, citizens. But, 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 in but, 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 no, let me, no, no, let me finish. No, let me, no, so let me finish. No, 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 I'm getting you. Ramadan oh. went to court. Ramadan oh. number two. Just, just by way of that. It was never. I've not finished with my submission. for identification as citizen. No. But to identify a person. Let's be clear on that. To identify you as Eduji, so so and so. That's all. Not as citizenship. <laughs> okay. But what was the Supreme because, Court ruling? Uh -huh. So the Supreme Court then made a point that yeah. persons who are entitled to the NHIS card is open because it's health insurance. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's open to every one person. <laughs> and so the constitutional requirement of being a registered Thank you. Must be a citizen. 18 years. <laughs> That's end all. Of sound Thank mind. you. And so that car yes. cannot determine cannot be. any one of those. Now, yes. let me make my yes. point. So Thank you. Now, that car cannot it, determine any one of those. Yes. 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 Go ahead. yes. You get it. Yes. So then, on what basis were you going to use that to be a voter in Ghana? You get it. And so the Supreme Court ruling said once that is not possible, in my thinking, as a citizen, a layman, it automatically should have nullified that register. The Electoral Commission deleted those names. No, I'm coming. Court, the Supreme I'm Court coming. asked them yes. to actually identify Good. them. They said they could. And they identified 55,000. Yes, but I said I would still believe they are still... <laughs> they didn't provide any, any evidence Don't worry. The Don't worry. Yes. Let's make progress. Mm -hmm. We had thereafter insisted, no, uh, the EC today is still admitting that that register is bloated. Okay, in their recent what press, number? in their recent press by conference, what number? They, by the admission is noted by yes. what margin? Don't what, worry, that, no, I mean, no, you I, see, that's oh, the whole. Oh, 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 yeah, I was here when you were speaking. Yeah, 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 I mean, yeah. talking about it being yes. over stretch. Oh, yes, and that yeah. it's even uh, give costing them a lot. You know why? Because you know when you print per their standard operations, uh, when you print, about ten percent margin must be on for sport ballots and all those things. And so when they do that, they see that it's too much as compared to the actual 10% they would have needed. You get it? So it's one reason. Another reason adduced by the EC is that the IT experts, you said it earlier, okay, advise them that because they, they, they use the software 2003-2008 blend uh, software to you serve as drivers of something, and they've become obsolete. And you know, in the IT world, five years is too long a time, okay, for new things to happen in the uh, IT so world. So why not? Okay. okay. So and then two, they have made the argument, as you said earlier, that changing and and a lot of their officers do not even know how to <coughs> handle the biometric devices That's and then more dangerous. clean them I'll get back no, to you, I'm you, you get it and so madame jane mensa was worried that she said when they are going to do the more pain and co for a next election mm -hmm. they spend almost two million dollars and co so she called the it officer and said look can't you guys use a take two hundred thousand dollars and do this work he said madam we've not been trained on how to do this okay so if and the, the last one training, in their them. press conference in their press conference i wonder you asked a very good question what are they, are they scared of this is the first time i'm seeing an opposition party saying we don't want a new register i don't get it you get it no, and no. you know what they no, had no, limited no, 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 what they had the limit according to the ec when they had the they are talking about cost i get surprised shrink you know why i think you know why? Yeah. EC says in 2016, they are limited registration. They spent 487 points, almost 488 million. Okay? EC is now proposing 4434, a full national new register. Okay? They are talking, of course. In 2016, you didn't know about course when you were spending 488. We didn't have poor people. We didn't have teachers having challenges. You get it. Look, election can make or break this nation. Okay? Anything that we can do to ensure openness, fairness, and transparency in our election electoral processes, let us do it. Was I've had the privilege ask, of no, being I mean, at the polling station. No, yeah, I've had the privilege hold, hold, hold of being on. a polling station. Yes, so you can ask you a question. Mm. Okay, yes, go ahead. You can oh, okay, ask so a question. Question. The election that led to Nanado becoming president, was it open? Was it fair? Was it transparent? That doesn't preclude the no, fact please, that there please. were challenges. No, please. When I Nanado... Mean, no, no, let's no, have, listen, let's, listen. No, no, we no, took I, our I, destiny. I, he's asked you. No, he's asked I, you I think that... We first, took our first, destiny no, into no, our own no, hands. No, 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 let's have an honest conversation. You've asked a question. So let me get him to address your question. 
The, so he's asked a question. You want you. To, he's asked a yes or no. He's a lawyer. He likes to ask yes or no questions. The election that resulted in Ronaldo becoming... If there's a yes and you still have further aspects, so you tell you the guy you can explain yes to him. <laughs> so I'm saying that the election that resulted in Ronaldo becoming president, was it free? Was it fair? Was it transparent? We took our destiny into our hands. Mm. Okay. Ordinarily, it should have depended on the EC to go through its processes. We decided to get every constituency IT equipment. Okay? okay, so we do our collation and get our results before the EC. We did that. So you doubted the that. register at the time? We had a problem with it from day one. You remember, let my vote. Is that a reason why? So, so, you remember, let my vote. So, so, our own so, uh, David Asante mm -hmm. eh, and our own Gabiach or Asario Chidaho mm -hmm. were beaten in this country. Okay, for saying, look, there are challenges with the register. No, that was That's not why they were beaten. Let my vote count. Just, no, no, they were a demonstration. Yes, and let my they vote count. And they did not follow so, their approach. So, 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 we need to, let um, let no, but, but, oh, but, lawyer, you didn't oh, make lawyer, allow finish. me finish. to go yeah, finish, through. Yeah, finish. You never answered my question. No, I said we took our destiny into our own hands. So, it was not fair. So, it was not fair. We had problems with it. So, we had to do this. the election was not fair. You can go and sleep. You should go and sleep. No, so, the election was not fair. No, we won fairly. Because, on the basis, yes. And, and, as a coming on the heels of the Supreme Court ruling, which said eh, all uh, coalition set, uh, re, uh, results must be given to the political party. Hitherto, they were not the case. You get it? So but these those things matters do not deal platforms. with the credibility of a register. They deal. Okay. They deal. They don't deal with the they credibility with of a register. They deal with it. Um, Why are you scared? No, the no, EC, but in any case, we, in we, any case, we have made a case for a new register for 2024. You claim right? that. Until now, we are still for that. Is on that, on that note, on that note okay. um, we have hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'll get record. back to you. Hold on, hold on. Put it on record. Hold on, that, George. Hold uh, on, George. <laughs> and uh, Godwin, I'll get back to you. So you will have your final comments. Bella is here. Will be sharing with us uh, the messages that have come to us yeah. this morning. Yes, Bella. Putting things into record, I think we should read some messages as well. So I am a trainee of Napco. I just want this to reach the NAPCO secretariat as to whether they will pay our August allowance or not. Why this deception? This government, these government appointees will fail the president. This is Eva from Binduri. And good morning to you, Mr. Host and all your panelists. Uh, we have enjoyed the great work that you're doing for us. Keep it up. My name is Mosquito Jr. from Tamale. Interesting name. Good morning, TV3. Let me use this platform to congratulate our new Chief Justice. It is my prayer that he will help uphold the role, the rule of law in this country in a non-partisan manner. This is Awini Emmanuel from Navrongo. Good morning, TV3. If our Electoral Commission insists on creating a new voters register, it is Ghana's money. Let us all waste it, but they should bring a technology that will allow us to register in our home constituency away from home to prevent cost of traveling home to register. Gu Farouk Mim. Winston, good morning. Why new register when there's an existing one? The register recently produced our current assembly members and unit committee members. So what is wrong with this register that we have to compile a new one which is not free? Thanks, Longinos from Ashaman, Lebanon. And from DJ Omale in Wayaso Guaso. Um, God bless His Excellency Nana Ado and Dr. Baumia for their numerous life-changing policies in just three years. Nana Baumia has performed better. Okay, Nana and Baumia have performed better and deserve another term. Hashtag four more for Nana uh, to do more. Regards to Honorable Martin J. Mensa Corsa, incoming Techiman South, NPP, NP. Good morning. This is Pascal Banadam from Upper East Inside Paga. His Excellency Nana is doing well, but I think they should maintain the old register and use the money for different uh, important issues. For instance, GN's, GN customers are suffering bitterly. I couldn't pay my two semesters fees because of the locked up fans. They should settle these issues before they think of winning 2020 election. Thank you. We, the ordinary Ghanaians, hope this incoming Chief Justice will bring a change in our judiciary arm of government. Removing the Republican Day um, and fixing Constitution Day is just confusing. Whether there's a challenge or not in the voters register, we the ordinary Ghanaians do not agree in getting a new voters register. We will resist until the last drop of our blood. That's by Med Kampaha. They want to compile a new register to disenfranchise a lot of citizens. The stronghold of the NDC will not be given adequate registration materials. That's the agenda. Mahama Yusuf Bursuma inside Tamale. A new registration or old, we are going to win the election. NDC should go and rest for 2028 from Yusuf Palua Tamale Ward K. 2028.
Um, <laughs> I see. Okay, so that's uh, one thing. Yes. Yes. Winston. 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 Someone uh, yes. I don't want to mention. Uh, yes. Uh, he, yes, sent me, yes. he sent me the um, um, the report of the special budget exactly. committee, and so maybe yeah, we are just, wrapping up just for the record. Mm -hmm. so that, <clears throat> um, management and administration, three hundred million. Mm -hmm. That's human resources and okay. services. Electoral service, seven six. Electoral services, mm -hmm. seven six zero million. Yes, go ahead. Go to then the new it register. Gives, it gives compilation of the new voters register four four three. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Conducting election two eight six exactly total one one billion sixty three million. So that's exactly what I yes, said. So yes, yes, absolutely great. Yes, yes. is so, it lower I mean, than twenty sixteen? No, it's All not. Right. Twenty sixteen, you get one point two billion. Yes, finally, yes, finally. Yes, yes, finally. <laughs> there's, so there's something. You see, the electoral commission had made this point about. STL had control Thank or you. third parties had Thank control you. over the password and that they needed it and others. First of all, what I do know is that when you enter into some of this agreement, what you do is that you create an escrow agreement that allows you to keep the password with a third party. Mm. You do not give the password to the end user. In this case, the Electoral Commission. Because the danger is that if I give you the password, the possibility of you having access to data and the potential for data manipulation is rife. So you give it to a third party between the, the vendor, the Electoral Commission, and that third party with that escrow Can the account. third party also be trusted? Yes, I mean, because with that <laughs> one, you know there's a third party. Okay. And so if you look at even the STL, Okay. Their external the third no, party I mean, was so brought in by another oh, by interested party. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. But in, all of this, in all of this, we need to be clear in our mind sure. that we are where we are today because the Electoral Commission proceeded to abrogate the STL contract without looking for an alternative. George, fine. And that is why uh, I brought yeah, that where Winston, we are. You've had because the register questions. is credible. You've had, it's asked interesting questions that uh, the elections that were held with this current register, mm -hmm. are they not credible? Uh, I asked a similar question. In 2004, the, the, the register that had been used preceding that, uh, the changing, uh, were they not credible? And then thereafter, between 2004 2012, when replacement was done, where the resource not credible, you no, get. I mean, so I mean, these are matters that. Two, so every two, two election we have new this thing. You get it. Let, so Ghanaians, no, I want. Let me wrap up. Let me wrap up. Yes, At least you are not able to advise them. I want to advise them. Go ahead with your advice. If they say they have problem, they don't want. The EC says it wants to have a new register. They have a choice, right, to either boycott the processes. You get it. I think okay. that would I mean, I not mean, be problematic. Just saying for them. that the NDC okay. has a Having choice. Having demonstration and call will not the change NDC, the issue. The NDC position. has a okay. choice. Well, Constitutionally, well, no, you no, say we shouldn't no, interfere no, with the work no, of the NDC. No. Well, you, 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 you want to interfere. You want to interfere. What is that? 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 Posturing by the NPP and the Electoral Commission that they can do whatever pleases them. No. It's a very dangerous posture. No. On that note, thank you very much. Are you um, saying Gordon that this is no a member of change. the um, NDC's legal team. <clears throat> George, thank you very much. Also, yeah, as a member. Uh, George yeah, AC is uh, the communications director of uh, NADMO and also a member of the NPP's communication team. Thank you very much, gentlemen.